and defensively, you, you know what Citadel is going to do. Um, how much of a defensive shift is it to try to just concentrate on the run and not, and not worry about the pass? Well, it's, it's certainly a big shift. I mean, the triple option is something you've got to, you've got to go in. You've got to attack it, not during uh, seg segments, but you've got to focus on it. And then, of course, you've got to be ready for the element of surprise and the play action pass off of it. So you can't focus wholeheartedly on the run, but that's a major, major emphasis that we have to uh, stop and, and contain for us to be successful on Saturday. Back here, Ben. How much of a process is it preparing your defensive linemen for cut blocks like you're going to see? Well, hopefully, uh, you know, the last few, let's say four or five weeks now, we've been cutting in practice during our Tuesday events and uh, live segments. So they've been getting some looks at it. It won't be quite the same as what we've been doing offensively to them, but, uh, you know, you've got to go through practice. You can't, uh, you can't simulate a cut block, meaning with a bag or a dummy or something like that. You've got to really go after it and have a, have a defender diving and, and, and throwing themselves through your thighs or through your, your lower half to get the feel for it. it it's a... It's a tough way to go out and practice and prepare, but it's the only way you can go out and practice and prepare for this type of offense. The line between a cut block that's appropriate and legal and okay and one that you hear defensive linemen start griping about. Where's that balance? Well, I mean, I hear defensive linemen gripe about every cut block, so that, that doesn't ever change. But, you know, the, the backward chop block or, or, or the high-low block is something that you always uh, see thrown during the course of a game, whether you know, an interior offensive lineman goes low on an ankle and up and an outside uh, tackle, for instance, comes down and making the high-low block. Or the backside, it, it's, I'd have to show you, but a backside, what we call a slip block, where the guard posts up a three technique, and then the tackle comes and chops his legs from behind. Right. Uh, those are the types of things that you'll see uh, the defensive line really get upset about. But uh, the D linemen, let's all understand this, they don't like being on the ground, and especially being chopped. Anything from the front foot to thighs is fair game, though, right? Yeah, as long as it's one on one, it's fair game. Yes. Phil, would you like to get a look at uh, Connor Mitch and or Lorenzo Nunez in action for extended period Saturday, if at all possible? Well, if all possible, certainly we would. I mean, uh, they've got to be a big part of our program moving forward and and seeing where we can go offensively with either one of them uh, leading us. But uh, we're going to hopefully play the best player that can lead us to a win against the Citadel. Rick. Sean, are you going to give the team a little history lesson on what happened uh, in 1990 when the USC and Citadel played? Uh, that's 25 years ago. We've got a, we've got a uh, running back coach on staff that was supposed to get the, the game-winning touchdown run, but uh, ended up blocking for the guy. So, you know, we've mentioned that a little bit, but 25 years ago has been so long. I think you just got to prepare and you've got to understand how important this game is for, for the Citadel and us, and we've got to go out there and, and, and be mentally strong, uh, disciplined in our, in our mindset to play a very, very well-coached football team and get a win. Sean, uh, don't forget also, Everett dropped 199 yards on you at Appalachia State in 1992. He did. He did. Um, what, am you, I to, what am I supposed to do about that? <laughs> well, you, well, you were on the defense that day. Yeah, I was. I certainly was. So would you, would you want me to fire him? Or anyway? <laughs> I can do that. <laughs> Have, having been a Southern Conference player yourself, though, and, and Everett, of course, can you explain a little bit the level of pride that Southern Conference players have when they step up to games like this and wanting to put on a good a good face? Well, you know the Southeastern Conference actually originated from the Southern Conference, don't you? And uh, that's one heck of a conference. And, and now that uh, a couple of teams have moved on from that conference, people think it's kind of taking a back seat in the FCS level, but it hasn't. Uh, the Woffers, the Furmans, the Citadels, the Chattanoogas, they've carried the torch. The new team, Mercer, coming on there. Uh, it's a great football conference. They're great football players in that league. Let me tell you, the best thing that ever happened to me was leaving Camden, South Carolina and going playing in the Southern Conference. Uh, it's some of the greatest memories and moments I'll ever have. Uh, so we know uh, exactly what to expect from this football team coming in. They've got well-coached players and they're extremely talented athletes and we've got to go out there and we better be prepared or they'll come in here and whip our butts.